Hey, good afternoon everyone. Tanya Gustafson here, your nutritionist and fitness coach with Fit Nutrition. Sorry for the delay with today's podcast. I had some tech. I'm not really sure why. I always come live via Zoom in the group. And uh, today I went to do it and it's telling me that I needed to log into Facebook, but my Facebook was there. So if anybody out there is a tech master uh, and you have the answer for that, please, you know, send me a message. And, uh, and help me out because tech is not my strongest suit and I would really like to, to solve this so I don't have these issues for next week and have to like duck and dive in and come up with things. So today we're doing this on my phone. Hopefully it works. I have a few notes down below. So if you see me looking down below, um, I've got some notes here rather than on, on my screen where I usually have them. So thank you for bearing with me. Let me know where you're tuning in from. If you're Fortunate enough to have the time in the middle of the day to stop and and watch me live. I so appreciate you you taking your time. And same with if you you know you're setting aside that time to come back and watch. I really do appreciate that. And if you have questions, please drop them below in the comments. I will definitely come back and answer them. And if you have suggestions about future podcasts that you on a subject that you would like to see, something that you've been wondering, pondering, I uh, haven't been able to find you know the right answers for yet or you just have questions and you kind of like to explore that absolutely hit me up put it in the comments or send me a message i'm super happy to explore any and all options because that's what we do here we want to learn information and when we know better we can do better right okay so here we go so today's topic we talk a lot about blood sugar in our group here, PFC every three, right? We're balancing our proteins, fats, and carbs. We're keeping our blood sugar stable. We're balancing our hormones. We're doing all the things. And most of the time, you know, nine out of 10 people are coming, you know, and learning that with the sole purpose of just wanting to lose weight, right? So we know that when we lose weight, that's beneficial to our health if we needed to in the first place, obviously, right? We're going to the, the extra weight loss is going to help with uh, relieving pressure on joints. It's going to help reduce that, that fat, possibly around the liver, the organs, all of that kind of thing. It's going to just make you a lighter person. You're going to be able to move better, have more energy. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of benefits to losing weight when you need to lose weight, right? Blood pressure can come down, cholesterol can come down, all of those things. And so, but a lot of times people are just equating that with losing weight, right? They're just looking at, well, I'm gonna balance my blood sugar because I know that's gonna make me lose weight. And yes, while it does, there's a lot of reasons that we need to to think about health-wise that we should be balancing our blood sugar. And I'm just gonna pop in here, I'm not really sure if I've mentioned this in the group before, but years ago, my dad had a sugar issue. And it had nothing to do with weight. You know, he had a high, he had high blood sugar, he had high blood pressure, he had high cholesterol. And my dad is, is not a very big guy. He's just, a, you know, five foot six, 136 pounds. He's never had a weight problem, but he had a sugar issue. He had a blood pressure issue. He had a cholesterol issue. Clearly they weren't having to do anything to do with weight. You know, he's never been overweight in his life, but he had to go and fix those things. And he chose to do it with food and not medication. And I'm super happy about that because that's part of my whole journey while I, why I'm here seeing my dad learning to put foods together in the right way that's going to create balance and why that's so important. Now, fast forward, this was of course, you know, way back, um, you know, when my kids were little and all of that. And so now in his eighties, he's much healthier. He's strong. He's, you know, fit and all of that. Um, stronger, you know, healthier than he was in his fifties and sixties because he's knowing what he's doing is right. And has been doing that for a long time now. So then we can, as we age, you know, we can, we can die younger <laughs> basically, you know, when you do get to the end of your life, it's going to, it's not going to be such a struggle if you've done the healthy things leading up to that, right? You get to enjoy more of that time as we get older, as opposed to, you know, just being around longer. We want to be able to live longer, like really live and really enjoy that, right? And, I, and I'm sure that resonates with a lot of people here because because I'm sure we all know somebody who's struggling with health issues who maybe has ignored them. We talked about that in a podcast um, a couple weeks ago there about ignoring the symptoms of diabetes, which is, you know, unstable blood sugar and the whole, you know, gamut that goes with that. And so why do we need to stabilize our blood sugar? Well, it can lead to diabetes. We know that too, right? So long-term uncontrolled blood sugar affects your microcirculate circulators, microcirculators. Okay. That's those little tiny veins 
that are in the extremities of our bodies in different places. They're everywhere, but usually thinking about the extremities. The small blood vessels that provide nourishment, and especially in your retina, in your eyes. Okay, and, and this happened recently, and I, and I touched on that with that gentleman, that, you know, autometrists are now starting to refer people because they can literally see with their equipment in the back there how unstable blood sugar is affecting vision. So if it's affecting, those so blood vessels are super, super tiny, right? So if it's affecting those blood vessels, it's restricting the blood flow. Blood flow is life, right? If you cut that off, yeah, I mean, we all know what happens. What happens if you, you, you know, tied something on your arm or whatever for a long period of time and left it there? Eventually it gets tingly, uh, the blood slows down, stops flowing, eventually your hand goes to sleep. If you left it there for days and days and days, eventually it would get, you know, it would die. The extra part of the limb where the blood isn't going would die, it'd become necrotic and it would be a bad thing, right? So anyway, it, it affects that, it affects your kidneys, your body's filtering system. So if we're you know, not stabilizing our blood sugar, our body's not filtering properly. If our body's not filtering properly, we're holding a lot of toxins on the inside. If we're toxic, that's not a good thing, right? We know that that's increasing our internal inflammation. Inflammation is the root cause of all disease. So there's a whole domino effect, right? So it also affects those small nerves that give you the sensation of pain. And, and let your skin know when it's being damaged and stuff like that. So that's something that probably a lot of you didn't know. All these little tiny things. And the farther along you go, so the more time, I've always said this, the more time um, that, the longer period of time where you've been doing or not doing things that serve your body, right? You're gonna get a, you're gonna get a result. So if you've been doing good things that serve your body for a long, long time, you are gonna be living those benefits and, in, and enjoying all of them. And when something does happen, because you know something, we can't prevent everything. Things come on, you might get an injury, you might be um, predisposed to some sort of a genetic disposition or you know, genetic disease. And even then, you know, you're, you're much better to handle that if you've been healthier leading up to that, right? So, um, but as these smaller things start to show up, you're like, well, I don't know where that came from and I don't know where this came from. It's those small things consistently over time that we've not done that are going to yield those um, undesirable things, right? So then we have to start reversing them. And the longer you've done it, it's going to take a little bit longer time to reverse them. So, um, so your skin can also you know, be damaged. If you've ever seen somebody you know, if you take a look at people, you can tell sometimes their health based on their external appearance, not necessarily their weight, but the way they look in their face. You know, they might look tired or they might look drawn out or they might look like they're in pain or they might look just sallow, you know, not have a very healthy complexion. They might have really ruddy skin or really dry skin or really, um, you know, have a, a condition going on there, right? And the things are showing up on the outside that's a sign of things that are not right on the inside, okay? So, um, and then also, not stabilizing your blood sugar actually accelerates the problems like coronary heart disease and dementia, Alzheimer's, all of those kinds of things. Now, I've, I've touched on this before, for, but for those of you who are new or those of you that you have missed it, doctors probably for the last you know, I would say 10 to 15 years have been calling Alzheimer's and dementia type three diabetes. We don't hear a lot about that. We hear type one, you know, people are born with it, they need insulin, there's a condition there. We hear type two, which used to be called adult onset diabetes years ago when I was a kid, it was called adult onset diabetes because as you got older, again, doing those things that were not serving your body over a long period of time caused you to now have diabetes, right? So it came on you as an adult. I'm not sure exactly when that term changed to type two, but we can't call it adult onset anymore because so many children are getting it. So there's clearly something we're doing wrong here and blood sugar stabilization comes at the very root of that. Unstable blood sugar is the, the basis of all metabolic disease, right? Inflammation is the cause of all disease the unstable blood sugar is right there. They, they go together, you know? <laughs> One's perp uh, perpetuating the other. 
So we want to we want to work on balancing that blood sugar. So let's just recap these ones that we found so far. So unstable blood sugar, what can it cause over long periods of time affecting your microcirculation? Those little tiny blood vessels, microcirculators. I'm having trouble with that word today. Microcirculators for the blood vessels in your eye, in your kidney for your body's filtering system, not filtering as well. Small nerves that give you sensations of pain or whatever that you might need to feel on your body. It's numbing those sensations. Not a good thing, right? You need to know if something's not feeling right in your body. And then, um, and damage on your skin, right? And so the, and it also accelerates the problem of coronary heart disease and then Alzheimer's and dementia. So not a great list if we're not balancing our blood sugar. And it's not a difficult concept. You know, we've all, we've all seen it here in the group, PFC3, eating a protein, a fat, and a carb together in the right portions, in the right frequencies throughout the day, and there we go. Are we going to be perfect and do it every single time? No, because we're not perfect humans, right? We're just, you're never going to do something perfect 24-7, 365 all the time. You're just not. But if you're doing things consistently, more than you're not doing them, it would just stand to reason you're going to get a better result, right? So there, there's long been held this belief in, in health and fitness, the 80-20 rule. I prefer to think the 90-10 because, you know, I like to be a little bit, have that little buffer there. So if nine times out of 10 or eight times out of 10, you're doing better, you know, balancing, 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 oops, Ah, uh, today wasn't so great. You know, I missed a couple of meals or I didn't have what I needed. Okay, back on track. There you go. Those those are that it's just that simple. Doing things better more often than not will definitely bring down your risk of all of those things we just talked about. Now, and again, it's over the long term. So, thinking about seniors. You know, I often think about that there's that whole issue because Everyone's thinking, well, it's just those, you know, diseases you get when you're older. Not necessarily. It's what you've been doing consistently over time or not doing. Some things have to do with age. Yes, there's muscle loss for sarcopenia. Um, there's poor circulation because our nitric oxide production goes down. We get some joint pain and we get lack of mobility sometimes if we're not still moving because our collagen production is down. All of which those things, by the way, we can supplement and we can bolster in our body. We know that now. So those are things that we can do. Might take a little longer as we get older if we start when we're older, but that's okay. We can always make changes and feel some results, right? So if they're not just old people diseases and they're not just um, blood sugar stabilization is for every body. And I can't bring up the chart here because I'm doing this on my phone, but we know that this is the love language that our body was born into. It's our body's love language, right? We were born into eating PFC every three, eating proteins, fats, and carbs every, you know, in the right portions and the right frequencies throughout the day, like a baby. Just think of your babies, all of you out there, all you mamas and papas who have kids, when your babies were little and your toddlers were little, what's the first thing they wanted to do when they woke up? Eat, right? So we should be de we should be eating. We shouldn't be skipping breakfast. And then they you they don't stuff themselves. They just eat till they're satisfied and they cry again when they're hungry. Well, all of those times that you said, well, I'm just gonna tank up and eat this big meal so that I it'll last me, you know? We shouldn't be doing that either. There's, our body can only metabolize so much at a time. What's it going to do with the extra? It's going to store it as fat because you spiked your blood sugar because you put too much in, even if it's good food. So thinking about that baby, right? That's how we were born. We come into this world, we're hungry. We're eating every, you know, three to four hours throughout the day or in the right portions, in the right frequency. What are we eating? A balance of a protein, fat, and a carb. That's in breast milk and formula. That's what it is. As we got to grow up, and get bigger, our, our digestive and all those things on the inside, the parts are still there. They're still the same. We just got to be a bigger human, right? So we need to take in the food in the same way so our body can still metabolize it in the same way so we can optimize the nutrition that we're putting in. You know, if you're, if you're putting in uh, that big meal saying, oh, I'm going to save it up till later, your body can only take so much at a time. Like I said, they're storing the rest as fat and then it's going to get excreted as waste. So you're really not benefiting your body at all. You're just storing fat and eating a lot and you're making yourself feel stuffed and uncomfortable. It's not really going to last you. 
You know, you might feel like you don't want to eat later, but it really didn't last you nutritionally because your cells receive the amount of food that it needs. It's only going to take so much like the baby. You can't stuff it. But then once it, you know, works through that in the three to four hours, then it needs more. And if you're not feeling like putting any more in because you've stuffed yourself, now your cells are deficient. Your blood sugar drops. Your brain doesn't get the food it needs. It starts to cannibalize from your muscle. And that whole nasty sequence happens. And then your blood sugar is unstable. And then all of those diseases and those conditions and whatever that we listed at the beginning, uh, then you're at risk for those. Right? I mean, the obvious ones are our blood sugar, you know, pre, pre-diabetes, if you're not stabilizing your blood sugar, pre-diabetes, then to diabetic, right? That's just where it goes. Um, all, all those uh, cancers, even um, Alzheimer's, dementia, um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, hypertension, heart disease, stroke, all of those things come from not being balanced in our body. And when you think about it, it makes sense because when we're balanced, all our organs and systems and all of our things uh, that we need to live are functioning synergistically like a well-oiled machine. And as soon as we, you know, something throws a cog in, uh, like a stick in the wheel, you know, a cog in the wheel that um, stops it, you know, stops that production, like getting unstable with your blood sugar, that throws everything out of whack. And now things are fighting to get back into the into place instead of working together. And then we feel that in our bodies and we feel that in fatigue and exhaustion and, um, you know, mental fog and lack of clarity and lack of concentration and poor sleep and um, weight gain and inability to lose weight and bloating and digestive issues. And then, you know, beyond that is when the disease starts because we're, you know, have those things that get longer and longer and longer and then they, they progress. So, you know... Being able to stabilize your blood sugar is, is such a simple concept. It's not hard to do. It's a little difficult sometimes getting organized when you're trying something new. I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna say it's not because anytime you try something different, it's different, right? But the concept is simple, right? You're eating your proteins, fats, and carbs, your PFCs every three in the right portions, in the right frequencies throughout the day. Every food on this planet can be classified as a protein, a fat, or a carb. Does that mean you should be eating, you know, tons of packaged foods? No, probably not. Can you stabilize your blood sugar that way? Yes. Will you be very healthy doing it that way? Probably not. If you're, unless, you know, that's kind of back to the doing more often good than not, right? So there's always that balance there. So just wanted to pop in with that today. And um, so I just pulled up this page here on, um, it talks, it was a page for seniors basically on, um, on, uh, on diabetes and it says adjusting your lifestyle and diet so the food you eat to deal with diabetes isn't easy but it's definitely worth the effort unstable blood sugar levels force your body to run without proper fuel right because we're unstable it's eating your muscle running on empty for too long can often lead to some serious health issues it's the same as your car right if you don't put oil in eventually your your engine's going to seize if you don't put gas in you don't run same as your body right Whether you have type 1 or type 2, maintaining your blood sugar levels within healthy ranges is crucial for preventing long-term complications. In fact, if it's not controlled, diabetes can affect nearly every organ in your body. And then they go on to list a whole bunch of, that we, you know, we've talked about some of them already. But it's really, you know, so... There is something very simple we can do. Food is our daily, we have it every day, we need to eat it, we know we need to eat food every day. Just put it together in the right way, right? And if you're not sure, if you've been following along here, you're kind of looking and you're watching a few podcasts and you're scrolling through, through some things and you haven't dove in, you know, send me a message, drop a comment below and just say, you know, that you're interested or that you'd like to have a call and I can set that up. I'll send you a link, we'll set up a time and we'll have a little chat free consult and you can learn a little about a little bit about what we do here what you know eight weeks to optimal health looks like get started with your fit and four program and really get your blood sugars under control and and start living with food freedom it's not about you know depriving yourself or removing things it's about um it's about building health when you build health if you need to lose weight the weight will come off and a whole bunch of other benefits will come with it because you'll be healthy in the long term, right? So, all right, thanks for joining me here today, you guys. Thanks for being patient with the tech and the different day of the podcast. You guys all rock. 
Um, have a happy, happy Thursday and enjoy the rest of your day. See you back here next week for another episode of Fit Nutrition Podcast.